to. Hi, my name is Christina Hoff and I'm a student at Cedar Crest College in the nursing program and I will be discussing a research study done on the relationship between simulation and nursing education and medication safety. The key points I will be discussing are problem, model, question, variables, intervention, ethics, data, results, limitations, and conclusion. The problem of the study is to identify if nursing students participated in simulation labs and could it reduce medication errors because the research problem is medication administration errors that are due to nursing students not having enough experience and being distracted when administering medication. The model is a conceptual model. Research has shown that the more nurses that have a baccalaureate degree on the floor, lower the mortality rate and lower the failure to rescue the patient. Medication errors have been linked to not having sufficient experiences as well as being distracted. The simulation labs are designed to help nursing students reduce medication errors and try to identify the distractions that may lead to these medication errors. The researchers ask a question. Does the use of simulation labs by the second year of being a BSN student in the medical surgical and maternal child placement environment influence the student's ability to safely administer medication? As I explain the study, it will answer the question. Variables. The study's independent variables were the simulation experience and the clinical experience. The dependent variables were the nurse's skills to administer medication and the clinical units, on the clinical units. The student nurse were placed being either the medical surgical floor or the maternal child unit. The intervention is simulation hours substituted for clinical hours. The ethical components before the study was performed, the researchers got approval and were granted by the ethics board. All participants to the study volunteered and were eligible to participate and were informed of the study's purpose and how the data was going to be collected. The sample. The sample in this study were the 54 nursing students who volunteered and furthermore, the randomized control group post-test only was the design of the study. As you can see in the table, there are two groups. The control group that consisted of 18 students and the maternal child unit and 12 students placed in the medical surgical unit with a total of 30. In the treatment group under the maternal unit, you had 10. The medical surgical unit, you had 14 with a total of 24. Overall, you had a total of 28 students in the maternal unit, 26 in the medical surgical unit, with totaling of 54 as a volunteer. Data collection. Data collection in this study obtained the 54 volunteered student nurses. The data collection instrument based off of a survey that was not developed by one of the authors and the form that was completed by the clinical instructor. Validity of the study was determined as the reports being locked in a cabinet, the instrument being critiqued for accuracy, wording, and appropriateness by several experts. And lastly, <clears throat> it's the content of the exam being secured and the questions content being appropriate. Furthermore, the analysis was done by entering the results into the SPSS version 13 software. Questionnaire results were also analyzed for common thread and intercorrelation. Now the results of the study were as follows. The treatment groups had less medication errors during administration because of their exposure to simulation. On the other hand, the control groups had more medication errors because of not having any exposure to simulation. The results of the errors were based on actual errors and potential errors. Lack of knowledge and distractions were the results 
of the p-value were the Poisson distribution of the p-value less than 0.05 and the chi-square, which the p-value of that was less than 0.001 and it was highly significant. Next we have implications. Implications of the study that will be useful in applying to nursing practice are nurse will perform better, meet instructions, meet instructors expectations, gain knowledge of medication administration, have less knowledge gaps, increase their critical thinking skills, and prioritize what is significant when administering medications. Limitations. A small sample size was obtained by only using the 54 volunteer nursing students from, it was two groups from the same nursing program. The study used two community hospitals which could have been using different medication systems and one could have been easier than the other. Each group of students had a different instructor which may also have provided a bias to the study when reporting the errors. Students had concerns because they had never been exposed to the simulation and may have not participated in the study due to the fear of being failed in clinical. In conclusion, it is that the simulation labs improve student nursing's knowledge. The simulation gives the student nurses have the chance to recognize error in knowledge or medication administration. Student nurses have the room to make error. Ner clinical instructors have the opportunity to report differences in different clinical scenarios. Student nurses have the ability to reassess the scenario after having analyzing the situation. Simulation lab experiences reduce medication administration errors. Simulation lab investigates patient safety and lastly, simulation lab experience should be replicated on a larger scale of student nurses using more than one program. These are my reference pages and this is the end. If you have any comments or questions, you may do so on this page. Thank you so much for watching.